DVAL or something like that and have it execute it for you. This is the very lightest weight of these. This is what I did in my last example where I converted uh, a has to a comma and I converted equals to a little hash rocket and that sort of stuff. That only gets you so far because when you start dealing with things like dates and other sorts of complicated things, you tend to move over to pre-processing where you load strings and modify to coerce them into Ruby code. So a common example here is to read it in as a string, which is what I did in the polish example, but instead of simple string substitutions, you actually look for patterns of things like dates or times or days of the week or something like that and convert those to actual constants. You're not doing full-blown parsing yet, but you are reading these things in as strings and then doing a much more uh, definite substitutions for things before you try to pass that off to something like instance eval. And the last stage of this, of course, is to parse. It's where you parse strings and files into your own language. You have to build your own grammar and your own parser and lexer and all that stuff. You're no longer relying on uh, Ruby's parser and lexer. You're actually writing your own language to do that. And this is by far the most complicated of these three guys. Really, that comes back to this idea of context. You notice that virtually everything that I've been talking about here, in some way or another, comes back to this idea of an implicit context, a way to wrapper things so that you can make it easier for the person who's writing code to write it and do stuff with it, and, uh, which makes it, of course, harder for whoever's writing this DSL. Uh, and there are all sorts of tricks that you can use to do that in Ruby. And one of them is context wrapping. Now, I've talked about the, the different ways to do this. Nested parameters, which is what we used in the stopping or the finishing problem example before. Remember, rules.add took a nested parameter to handle all those cases. Method chaining, which is the way that we built those stateless discount and profile objects. And here you use the dot to supply the context between each one of the subsequent calls. Functional sequence, which is what we, when we said recipe consists of, and then add, 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 add. That's using a closure block to supply a context for each of the calls that are being made. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. One is the context block, which I did before. The other way of doing this is with something called a sticky attribute. <coughs> It turns out Ruby is a really, really powerful language, uh, more powerful than a lot of people who have never used Ruby understand. In fact, um, a lot of what makes Ruby so powerful are the, the metaprogramming kind of stuff you can do in the language itself. So for example, the private, uh, protected, and public markers in code in Ruby are not keywords in Ruby. They are actually sticky attributes. And you can create your own sticky attributes that work exactly like private, protected, and public do in Ruby itself. And it's actually quite easy to do. So here's an example of using sticky attributes to supply context around things, which is another DSL technique. Let's say that you have some code that looks like this, and there's some sort of complex calculation that needs to happen, and it takes a really long time. And because it takes so long, one of your goals is to always have your unit test run really fast. And because this takes so long, you'd rather not run this every time you run your unit test. You'd like to only run it uh, when you're running functional tests or something like that. Or maybe uh, only when you do an acceptance build. Do you want this very really long running test to run? There are a couple of different ways you could do this in Ruby. One of them is like this create an if block that says if environment is build, uh, if environment builds equal to acceptance, then do this, otherwise don't do that. And this certainly works, but it's kind of ugly. It's a little weird to have an if statement around a method definition. It's perfectly legal Ruby code, but it's kind of odd uh, to see that. So an alternative way to do that is to create a sticky attribute that says acceptance underscore only. So anything marked with acceptance underscore only would only run as part of the acceptance build and then uh, not otherwise. This is an example of a sticky attribute. So that's another way of doing it. And I'll show you how to implement that in just a second. 
And the third way to do it is to, let's say you have several of these guys. Uh, now, you can create your sticky attribute to work just like private, protected, and public in that they're basically in effect until it encounters another sticky attribute in the same family. The other way to do that is to wrap the whole thing in a block and say acceptance only do, and then all the tests that appear in that block are ones that get run just during uh, the acceptance only time. And you could also, if you're going to do this, add a little bit more description to it and say acceptance only with some sort of explanation. Uh, and this actually is the, the test itself. Notice the def is gone. This now translates directly into the test class where you say, or test method. You say acceptance only uh, and then give it a name and then uh, execute that code. So let's see what those look like to implement those things. So here's acceptance only, and this is really just a method call in Ruby, acceptance only, and what it returns is true or false depending on if the current environment is acceptance or not. The way that you turn this into a sticky attribute is by using uh, in Ruby what's called a hook method. And this is the hook method I'm using here, method added. This is a method that gets called automatically by Ruby anytime you add a method to a class. And you can do stuff within method added. So every time your class adds a method, Ruby calls this. And what I'm doing here is say remove method unless acceptance build is true. So this guy basically sets acceptance build to true if we're in the acceptance environment. And then this will remove that method unless that's true. And then this sets the sticky attribute back to false. What that means is this particular sticky attribute, you have to put acceptance only before every method that you want this to apply to. Because what will happen is it will call that method which sets this value or turns this either true or false. And then this will determine whether uh, it actually ends up in there or not. If you want to make it act like the private protected public keywords in Ruby, you just take this guy off and just leave that true for, until you encounter something that turns that off, which would be another method added hook. So notice this is just another way of supplying a context by creating what is called uh, an attribute in uh, the, the, uh, the C-sharp world. Uh, they're called, uh, actually they're attributes in Java, annotations in C-sharp. It's the exact same mechanism here. The other thing you could do, the, the second example we show, saw was creating a block where you could put acceptance only and then everything within that block executes um, when you're the, in the correct environment. And this is a method that takes in a block and it basically just says call that block if you're in the right environment. And this can be the definition of multiple tests inside this block and those will all get executed if you're in the right environment and otherwise they won't. And then the last one was where we replaced the actual test stuff itself with um, this uh, acceptance syntax. And here you say acceptance only and taking a method name and a method body. And then if the flag is correct, then you define a method based on that method name and that body. And that becomes the thing that you execute. You can actually do this kind of sticky attribute trick to supply context for a lot of different things. So for example, maybe you want to create a logged sticky attribute for your code. So that you say, well, anytime you decline something, I want that value logged. That's just another sticky attribute. And it's a way of supplying a context, a DSLE kind of context, around the execution of this method. And it's pretty easy to implement that as well. This is a module called loggable. And we're using that method added hook again where we basically just say, okay, if, if, uh, if, they, if they've called a method that is logged, reset it back to false so that it only pertains to this one method. And then if logged method, then you go and take the original method and uh, give it a new name and then uh, define a new method that does all the stuff that the original one did but wrapped log messages around it. 
This is the actual execution of the old method, the original method that this is wrapped around. So basically what you're doing is creating a brand new method, doing 